The sun is out and warm and shining. And that means here in Toronto, our wedding season is about to begin. And it's always this time of year, a month or two before I really start into the heavy part of my wedding season is I look through my gear, I look through the weddings, I look through how I'm shooting everything, and I see how I can level up as a photographer. How can I best prepare for this wedding season coming up? And if you're a photographer, I have five things for you that you can do to improve your wedding photography this coming season. Before we get into the video, I have had a bunch of you asking about like mentorships or coaching. Do I do any of that? Uh, and because I am a, well, a wedding photographer, I don't have a ton of extra time to do something like that. However, I do have a little bit of this time before my wedding season gets crazy. And so if you're interested in that, I have an exciting announcement at the end of this video. So if you're not interested in it, don't worry about it. If you are, make sure you watch to the end of the video. Speaking of the end of the video, the fifth point that I have, I have made a PDF uh, that you can use and download to help you in that point. It's about going through your old weddings and how you can improve from that. So if you want a PDF to help you get better, you can download it in the description uh, and I'll explain all of that at point five. Okay, so the first point is take less photos. I don't know about you, but I had a lot of imposter syndrome um, when I started my wedding photography business almost 11 years ago now. I had people giving me thousands of dollars to take photos. And especially early on, I didn't even think that was a real career. I had no idea people would pay that much. And to be honest, I was doing that for free already. I was doing it as a hobby. I couldn't believe that people would pay me that much money to shoot a wedding. And because of that, I felt like the best way to give people value was to capture every single moment of anything happening at a wedding ever. And so I would be shooting thousands upon thousands of images. I, anytime anyone moved anywhere, I was like, oh, take a photo of that. Oh, take a photo of that. On top of that, you add the ability of digital cameras to just shoot endless amount of photos. And in the moment, it is really fun to like do the spray and pray method, right? You're just like, bah, 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 like shooting. You're like, oh, I hope I get a good one in here. Um, and it is, it is easier to take a lot of photos at a wedding. But for this year, for this season, I challenge you and I'm challenging myself to take even less photos. And, and why do I say that? Do I say like, just like, don't take photos of important things? No, that's not what I mean. I'm not telling you to take 100 photos at a, you know, a 10 hour wedding day. I think that would be a bad idea. But I am saying try not to take maybe 8,000 images. This idea really was impressed on me when I started shooting film uh, several years ago on wedding days. I would take my medium format film camera, which only has 16 images per roll, and I remember just when I first started using it, I was like, oh my goodness, like every photo costs so much. Um, and what I found was when I got home, I would look through, you know, say I took a roll during a couple sunset photo time. And I was looking through all my digital images, right? And I shot hundreds of them and I was like scrolling through them, trying to find the best ones. But when I got my film back, I looked through the 16 photos and I loved 15 of them. And I was like, wow. I almost felt like I could get rid of all of my digital images and just use these 15 images. They were well thought through. They were intentional. I wasn't taking that like kind of crappy photo just because I felt like I needed to be shooting and needed to be working. And this is an extreme example, of course. I'm also not saying shoot one roll of film at a wedding. That's stupid. Um, but I am saying, what if you shot less images? What if you shot not every single waking moment of wedding? I actually found that it held me back from taking really good images because I was so focused on just shooting, shooting, shooting. I wasn't standing back and taking the time to really evaluate the scenario, evaluate the surroundings, 
What could I really shoot that's really beautiful? How could I really absorb what's going on, the dynamics of the wedding day? And how could I, you know, get some images that really told that story in a really beautiful way instead of just being like desperate panic in my eyes, shooting as many images as possible. The second thing is taking less time with your couples to take photos. When I started, I know I always like start every point like that. When I started in photography, but it's true, I made so many mistakes. Uh, and that's, I like sharing my mistakes on here. I think hopefully it's helpful for you guys. But when I started wedding photography, I <laughs> spent so much time with a couple. Like, uh, like, I remember this one time, I think it was the couple as well, but we had allotted like three hours for photos three hours for couple photos, bridal party. And I know it wasn't like we were taking photos that whole time, but it was just like an absurd amount of photography time, which was just unnecessary. I didn't need that much time. If I was really focused on quality images, if I really was intentional and planned ahead of time, okay, these are the best places that I want to shoot. And I planned ahead of time, okay, these are the photos that are most important to the couple. And I think the photos that are important to me uh, for my style and everything like that. When I actually put thought and time and intentionality into how I was spending the time with my couples, I realized I don't need that much time. Like I didn't need an hour and a half for couple photos. I had this pressure as well. I had this pressure to be like, oh, spending more time with the couple is better. But what I found was when I crunched that time down a little bit, I was more efficient in taking photos. And that means I'm gonna just take better photos and not take bad photos. But also I found it was better for my couples. Like they're there to enjoy their day. When they get pulled away to take photos, they're missing out on the vibe and the experience of their wedding. And they get tired. Like when you're taking photos with people, if you've ever been on the other side of the camera, you, you get exhausted. And if you can make those photos happen a little quicker, uh, it's going to be better for you in the long term because your couple is gonna be more fresh uh, and you're gonna get better photos out of it. The third thing is to calm down. Weddings are super stressful. And if you screw it up, you're going to be dead. That's at least what everyone says. <laughs> like anytime someone hears I'm a wedding photographer, they're like, oh my goodness, that must be so stressful. Uh, and it's really easy to take on that ethos yourself as a wedding photographer. It's really easy to be like, yeah, maybe they are stressful. Maybe people are super stressed. And if I screw this up, I'm uh, it's bad. Uh, but if you just constantly think about how stressful weddings are, and if you really think about all the things that can go wrong, and if you're kind of like amping yourself up to be stressed about it, that's not going to help you as a wedding photographer. Uh, when people say like, weddings are so stressful, I often tell them like, no, they're actually not that stressful. Like weddings are predictable. Uh, it's not like all of a sudden the bride's going to start walking up the aisle or down the aisle or do something radically different. Uh, the ceremonies are typically the same. Um, maybe there's something, some kind of random event that happens that throws you off guard. Uh, but your couple should have probably told you about that. Yes, they are high paced. And yes, there's a lot of things to do at one time. But I don't call weddings stressful. Uh, part of that is because I want to be calm. I want to be in a good space. And I know maybe that sounds silly to some of you, but it's actually really important to have a good mindset as you go into shooting weddings. So when I'm heading to a wedding, even when I'm heading to a big wedding that maybe has a lot of pressure on me, as I'm driving there, I'm sitting in the car and I'm like, oh my goodness, I better, I gotta do a good job on this. Like this is like huge for my like business. Like this has gotta be... I stop myself and I say, okay, Luke, this is, this is a fun day. This is a fun day for them. This is an amazing opportunity that I have to be a wedding photographer. And I turn on my wedding playlist that I have for myself. And that is a playlist that just like chills me out. There's, it's a little upbeat. It's a little, you know, toe tapping. Uh, and it gets me into a good mood of being positive and being excited about shooting the wedding day. Uh, I think if you go in being stressed, 
uh, it's not going to help. And sometimes other people don't help with that. And they say, they tell you all the things, their horror stories of, you know, other friends or families of things that happened at weddings. So instead of using your brain to be stressed and thinking about all the things that can go wrong, honestly, just try to forget about that for the moment and use all your brain cells towards, you know, composing the right picture. How can I help my couples be relaxed and excited? How can I set up this most beautiful image? How can I get my settings at a really good spot so my whole wedding is shot really well? The fourth thing is to simplify your gear. If you want to be a better photographer this year, get rid of all of that crap in your bag that you do not need. There should be no point at the wedding day where you are standing over your bag and you're like, okay, uh, what should I do at this moment? Should I put this one on? Should I put this one on? I, I only, I say it that way because that there, I spent a lot of time humming and hawing over what lens I should, and I was so stressed. Am I using the right lens at this moment? Um, and that problem comes from just having too much crap, like having too many options. Simplify, simplify, simplify your gear. Have a plan ahead of time to say, okay, I'm going to use this lens and I'm going to use this lens at these times and I'm going to stick to it. Don't panic in the moment and try to change things. Of course, if there's a scenario where you really should change things, of course, change things. Like you don't need to bring like your whole studio with you in order to successfully shoot a wedding day. I know that's scary. And I'm also not saying like dump out your bag, bring one camera and hope it goes well. If you do carry a lot of things and you think like, OK, I probably could get rid of a few of these things instead of just leaving them at home, I would suggest like bringing two bags. Uh, this is what I did when I was transitioning from having everything I ever owned and I brought it with me on weddings to having a much more streamlined amount of gear for weddings. And that was I had two bags. I had my streamlined bag. This was the goal. Uh, this is what I wanted to try to shoot weddings with this simple gear. And then I brought all the things that made me feel better, right? The backup this, the backup this, this light, this lens, this backup thing. And I had all those things and I'd leave it in the car or I would bring it with me, but I'd leave it locked and I'd have it sitting in a corner. That way, worst case scenario, you could always run over there and get something that you never use anyways. And but maybe this will be the time that you use it once, but you never really do. And it just sits there and gathers dust uh, and you can have it there and it can make you calm. But then you can actually show yourself, hey, you know what? I can actually successfully shoot a wedding with this just this this bag here. Uh, and it's a great way to transition from having so many things to having what you actually need to shoot a wedding. I'm telling you, bringing less things on a wedding day will help you shoot so much better. And if you just try it, I'm sure you will thank me later. The fifth thing is to do a review of a previous wedding. This is really important if you live in a climate like Toronto, where we have a very kind of dedicated wedding season that's only about half the year. Uh, and so there's a time when I haven't shot a ton of weddings in a row. And it's really helpful to go back to a wedding that you shot that you felt pretty good about and look through it and see what did you do well? What did you do poorly? And this is where the uh, PDF comes in. Uh, if you want to download it, I put it in the description, but this is just a worksheet to walk you through like some questions and to th some things to think about as you look through a wedding. So you can download that for free if you think that would be helpful. And these are the questions that I want to ask myself. I want to ask, what did I do well? What did I do poorly? And what could I improve on? I mentioned this before on the channel, but several years ago, I had a photographer go through my own weddings and it was brutal. Uh, I brought in all my RAWs, all my, the selects, the images that I sent to the client, as well as everything else that I shot. And I had a photographer go through and look at everything. And it was, it was painful because it's like, I don't know, it feels weird for someone else to see everything that you do, the mistakes, the good photos. You're like, yeah, I know I shouldn't shoot like that, but I did it anyways. Uh, and they walked through and they did this for me. They said what I did well, what I did poorly, and what I could improve on. And it was, it 
it kind of a turning point for me. And some of those things, yes, I knew, but some of the things I didn't really, I didn't really see until someone else pointed them out to me. And so this is the big announcement. I'm going to do a few of these as a coaching option in the next month. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna do this more than once or if it's just gonna be this month, we're gonna see how it goes. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be that photographer for you. So if, if some of you are interested in a more of a one-on-one -on -one coaching, if you're into a wedding business and you want to improve your business to the next level, uh, this is for you. This is not for everyone, uh, but this is gonna be for people who are really serious about taking their wedding photography to the next level. And I wanna help you. And I think this is an incredible way to start. And so what I'm gonna do is you're gonna send me a wedding that you've shot and I'm going to go through and comb through everything you've done and I'm gonna record myself going through it, telling you what you did good, what you did badly, and what you could improve on. And I hope this is gonna help some of you that do this to have an absolutely incredible wedding season. So if you're interested in it, there's only gonna be a few spots available. So you can head to the description below. I'll have a link in there. Uh, or you could just head to my website, go into the shop, and look for the full wedding review. And the last thing I'll say, if you got my first ever newsletter, you actually had early access to it before this video even came out. So if you are interested in things like this in the future, if you're interested in getting a little bit behind the scenes, a little extra content that doesn't come out on YouTube, uh, make sure to sign up for the newsletter as well. All right, oh, that's everything. Happy shooting, and I will see you next week.